Hi, I'm Chris. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2002, so I'm approaching 10 years as of the recording of this video, assuming that it's going to be viewed for years and years into the future. Um, I've been putting this video off for a while in part because I'm lazy and also just because I'm not really sure what else can be said. Um, there's There's already been so many great videos out there to really help encourage people and just remind them that that they're not alone in in this entire struggle or fight or whatever kind of metaphor you want to use. Um, I don't know. It's 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 kind of strange to really think about. Actually, I guess it isn't really that strange because I've been blogging for over three years now. I have a podcast where I talk to total strangers for two years now. So this whole idea of talking into a webcam or a camera or whatever shouldn't be that foreign to me, but it's. I don't know, there's something a little bit more personal about this that I guess I'm kind of afraid of. Um, so, I, every, as I think about this video, every now and then, like, really quality one-liners pop into my head. And I guess maybe I can string them together here, but I guess it's probably best to start from the beginning. So, like I said, I was diagnosed in 2002. Um, this is my freshman year of college. And life wasn't that difficult, I suppose, back then just because I had a pretty restrictive diet, but I was also exercising pretty regularly, so I probably got by on the exercise more than proper diabetes management, or as far as the insulin and checking and everything like that is concerned. Um, and as the years went on, I kind of fell into a routine, which I guess everybody does, and by the time I had graduated, I had been testing maybe once or twice every two days, um, still taking insulin, obviously, but I wasn't really doing wasn't really doing my best to to really keep an eye on what diabetes was doing. And then when I left college and I got my first job, the first year of my job involved me going on the road and installing a bunch of boring stuff that I don't even remember now. But the point is that exercise was at a premium, aside from the lifting of the heavy equipment and eating was pretty crappy just because you're eating at restaurants and you know getting fast food pretty much the entire time it was impossible to have a pretty it's impossible to have a decent meal on any kind of regular basis it was impossible to really expect that I could maintain a proper diet given how restrictive it is like right now as we're recording this, this is 2012 I love me some broccoli back then I wouldn't touch anything except for a carrot as far as the vegetables were concerned and by the end of that year I'm pretty sure my A1C was over 13. I think it was over 11, but there, I feel like 13 is is probably a little more accurate. But either way, it was not good at the end of that first year of, of that work. And I told my boss, I said, like, this job is literally killing me. It's not great. And it was around that time that I had, um, it was around that time that I decided to, to join Twitter for some stupid reason, because I've been hearing a lot about it on the tech podcast I've been listening to. And one of the first people I found and followed was Carrie, which I guess is how all, most of these diabetes stories start. I found Carrie's blog one way or another. And even then, as I slowly began to open up and communicate with other people, I didn't really think about what it meant to really share my diabetes story, be it in 140 characters or at the time a blog post. Um, and I still wasn't really doing a great job of things. And then at some point, I'm not sure what it was, but I decided to actually start reading the links that I was people were posting on Twitter and starting to read the blog posts. And somewhere around there, it just clicked that this isn't... It isn't just about me. Even though it's, it's my diabetes, it's your diabetes, it's your cancer, it's your whatever. It doesn't have to be a diabetes thing. It's, it's a very personal disease, but that doesn't mean that it has to be a you know, a one-man or one-woman army fighting this battle. Um, and eventually I decided to start a blog and to really, at first it was just to vent my frustrations with with the lack of control, with the lack of everything. And eventually the the tone of my posts kind of became a little more lighthearted as I started to exercise again, as I started to eat a little bit better, I started to just do a generally better job of taking care of myself. And I don't know, it was there was just something, I really can't pinpoint the exact moment that things started to turn around, but I know that from where I was to where I am right now, just everything in my life has changed, and there's a great part of it that has to, there's a great credit that has to be given to 
the online community. And now I, just, I suppose it's just the community in general because I hang out with a lot of these people face to face, which is great. But the the point of all that is just that even even if you don't want to share what your A1C is, even if you don't want to share what you just tested at, the fact is that there's a whole network of people out there that that can that, that are there to support you. They they know what you're going through to some extent, and if it's dupe or out of coffee, that sucks. We're here to support you. If it's man, I just made a really awesome, you know, piece of pie or something like that, hey, high five, fist bump, be sure to explode it. Um, but also if it's, man, I was up all night with crazy lows, I was up all night with crazy highs, I don't know what's going on with, with my pump, you know, there's any kind of actual diabetes you know, problems or whatever, there's still a community that's out there that's willing, not willing, but that's, that wants to help, that wants to offer that support because doing this by yourself is pretty miserable and it is pretty it's pretty special to know that you know total strangers I've said this before we are, we are a family of strangers and that we know what everybody's going through we know that it's an individual thing but if you want to share people are out there that are going to listen and they might be down the street they might be across the country they might be across an ocean but there are people out there that want to listen and and I think that that's a really unique thing that I wish I knew about sooner. I, I wish that I knew that I didn't have to kind of hide everything, or I didn't have to. I didn't have to just bear the brunt of of the weight of caring of dealing with this disease day in and day out. I mean, it's whenever you're diagnosed, there are a thousand things going through your mind, and you have to adjust to pretty much everything. And I'm not I'm not sure if it would have helped knowing at the beginning that there was a community out there, but I think it probably would have made a difference at some point whenever that that slow steady um, climb of my A1C was happening that you know it was going to be okay but it took it's not like I really hit bottom but it took some pretty some pretty crappy you know diabetically speaking some pretty crappy numbers to really get me to open up my eyes and realize that there's a community out there and and I don't know it's you just I mean, through the community I've you know I started blogging I started my podcast I have a girlfriend now which in a roundabout way is 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 due to the community and due to the fact that you know because of the blogging and everything else I mean just my ability to open up and actually communicate with somebody is a result of, of my sharing this disease online it, it's kind of weird to think that but I mean there are so many things that I have to credit you guys for and my life is in a great place right now despite where it was where I am now I, I, I love it and I don't want anything to change except for I guess the diabetes part, but you think about it, if you take out the diabetes, then what would my life be? What would my life path be? That's a separate metaphysical thing I don't want to get into, but the point is that despite all the crap that is diabetes, there's a lot of great that can come out of it. And it doesn't mean you have to share your story on this video, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, start a blog, it doesn't mean you have to join in the Twitter chats on Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, you don't have to do all of that. You're not required to. Nobody's saying this is a mandatory thing. But if you want to, then there's a community of people out there that are there to support you. And I think that's the point. That's the point of all of this. I mean, everybody goes out there and they'll they'll post, you know, pictures of their dog on their blog. But they're also going to talk about their, the hardships that are real when it comes to living with this disease. And that's really what it all comes back to is that, again, there's this community of people that they're, we're here to support. And, you know, I guess that's really what it's all about that the, the, that the community exists for this grand purpose and it just kind of comes together whenever we need to whenever you need it to to offer that support to say yes you can do this you had a night that was you couldn't get your blood sugar above 60 that's okay you can do this it'll, it'll, it'll turn around tomorrow you had a pump failure and you know, you're out of supplies and you're panicking you have to drive home and all kinds of crazy everything bad that's happening with your pump is happening it's all right. Tomorrow will be a better day. You can do this, and it's it's just important to remember that despite all the crap that happens, despite all the bad, despite all the negative, despite how intense this thing can be day in and day out, you can do this. And yeah, I guess that's about it.